Do you know what this is? This is real wasabi from Japan. For the taste test, let's go ahead and make some salmon and sashimi. Let's make thin, consistent slices. Use a sharp knife and try to cut it in one motion. Beautiful. For plating, let's go ahead and place them on top of shiso. For the middle piece, I'm going to roll up my thinnest pieces and going to make a rosette. Three pieces on the third one and some ginger as a palate cleanser. Okay, back to the wasabi. This is Hon Wasabi from Shizuoka. Wasabi is notoriously challenging to grow as it requires specific conditions such as cool temperatures, shade, and pristine water. The flavors are short-lived and it must be ground prior to eating. The entire plant is technically edible. The stems taste like celery. I'm using a metal grinder called an Oroshigane. The original one was made out of shark skin and is still available today. I noticed with the Japanese wasabi, the texture is a lot more creamier and vibrant. Let's get it out onto my cat plate. Nice. Here is a tube wasabi in comparison and my chogochujang. Alright, so here we go. Let's start with the tube wasabi. That's what I'm most familiar with. It has a lot of horseradish in it, so I expect a lot of nose barn. And instead of mixing it into the soy sauce, for this experiment, I'm just going to keep everything separate. Wow. Nose boom. This is what's really common in restaurants. It's usually horseradish is the main ingredient, then you have a little bit of wasabi, and you have green food coloring. Ginger too. Cleanse the palate. Mm -hmm. It has a very grassy smell. It smells like freshly grated daikon. Um, daikon oroshi. That's really interesting. Completely different from this. It has that spiciness, but it doesn't burn your nose. It has a spiciness that kind of hits the back of your throat. Very mild, and now it's gone. This should be really interesting. Too much, we'll see. That's good. I gotta try it again. It's extremely subtle. I'm gonna put even more this time. Herbal notes in the beginning, it's sweet and then you get that slight burn, but it's not in the nose, and then it quickly dissipates, and it leaves a kind of herbaceous and sweet taste in my mouth, which is actually really nice. So I have a lot of the root left. Grinding this much probably only took about a fifth of the root. I don't know how to describe it. It's very subtle, but it's also really, really nice. It's so good. Chef Hiro, he makes sushi videos. He does a video where he grinds a whole bunch and makes it into a uh, gunkan sushi and eats it. I could see why he makes that face that he does. It's not nose burning, but it is like back of your throat on your tongue spicy. I'm gonna do one cho gochujang. This is my favorite. Cho gochujang is a vinegar gochujang and a sweetener and garlic sauce. So it's garlicky, sweet, tangy, and I think it's perfect for sashimi. Or in Korean, it's called hue. That's my favorite. I love spicy food in general, so I don't want this to go to waste. For the shoyu, I'm using marudaizu, which is whole soybean. Mm -hmm. No, I'm all out. All right, two wasabi, here we go. That one immediately. Spiciness hits the nose. Clears your sinuses, sweet, and then dissipates, it's gone. I grew up eating that and I don't know, it's not be controversial. I might actually prefer that. This, I can either mix the powder or squeeze the tube. And this one is pretty labor intensive. And even though it was on sale, $25, I think regular price is usually like 50 to 75 bucks for a root that size. And it doesn't last long. Also, when you grind it, the flavors are gone within about 20 minutes or so. So you have to grind it fresh and use it. I can't grind it ahead of time and enjoy it either. There's no wrong choices here. If you can find raw wasabi on a sale, it's really fun to do. It's very different. I think you can taste sushi the way it's supposed to be. And I plan to make some nigiri sushi with it next time. I have a lot of wagyu steak left. I'll have to try that again next time. Thanks for watching.